Hi, I'm Kat and you're listening to Cat Tales. With a career spanning over 36 years and with record sales in excess of over 30 million albums, Imagination released many classic funk soul dance hits such as Body Talk, Just an Illusion, Flashback and Changes. It's fair to say that founding member and songwriter Lee John is one of the hardest working men in music, touring internationally with Imagination and Solo, appearing in as well as producing and directing films, writing books and also charity work. And it appears that his creativity is just warming up. This is the one with Lee John. Hello there, Lee. Are you OK? I am, oh, well, <laughs> semi OK. <laughs> semi OK. Today has been like a Monday. It oh, really has. Goodness. But I've managed to go through everything methodically. And, um, you know, you have to have an idea of as to how, especially if you're going abroad, you need to make sure you know what you're doing. You do, don't you? Oh, bless <laughs> you. Oh, are you going somewhere nice? I'm, I have a place in Spain, which is oh. near Benicassim, which is uh, in Benicassim, sorry, near Valencia. Lovely. So it's really by the sea and it's very tranquil, very basic. Mm. Um, it's it's just very, there's a lovely little village there. So it's a very, very close-knit family oriented. It's just nice. Oh, sounds lovely. Oh, I wish I was coming. Mm, and it's very, very yeah. Spanish. Oh. You know, it's not, even if they have festivals and stuff, they still maintain, you know, their, their, their Spanishness. Yeah, lovely. Very nice. Mm. And away from it all, and it feels like you're going back in time almost, doesn't it? It is. It mm. is. There's restaurants there that, you know, I go to that they know me. And, uh, you know, I order the same thing all the time, which is like Pescaditos, which is like, you know, mixed fish and stuff. Mm. And I love it. I just really, really love it and get into it. So oh, for me, yeah. it's cool. And uh, I'm just doing so many projects right now. And they seem to be increasing by the week. I know. That, um, you know, including a film. I did this film uh, a couple of weeks ago, which was sent to me. A friend of mine was doing it and said, look, Clark Peters is going to do a guest bit in it. You can do a guest bit in And come on, you have to. And just a friend of mine who's... Uh, who's uh, did a book called Iced, I don't know if you remember, years ago, yeah. about a crack addict. Oh, really yes. And did the play, yeah, Ray Shell. Mm. And, uh, and of course, Clark Peters did Five Guys Named Mo. He produced, directed it, wrote it, and uh, it's been in The Wire and stuff. So we ended up being in a film together, you know, just yeah. a couple of weeks ago, in between me touring and all the other bits, you know. Oh, wow. You've got such a lot going on, haven't you, at the moment? Because you must be the hardest working man in show business, Lee, because look at all the stuff you've got going on. I've been reading up on it all. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've been, you know, I love doing the work and it's, all be, it's always been about the work. You know, everybody sees the glamour side of me. Some mm. people do. But, you know, I'm very much in, like, in the fashion side of it. I'm, I'm involved in doing a new fashion thing. Um, but I've, that's always been a part of me. But I'm also finding that I'm mentoring a hell of a lot now to, to younger artists and to, especially when we're well, doing this flashback film in, in particular and recently yeah. the Police and Thieves film. Um, because obviously when you have a wealth of information, a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of education after 36 years, mm. you know, I rather put it to good use as opposed to just leaving it stagnant and you yeah. like, like a lot of artists do, they just go around in circles doing the same thing. Yeah. That isn't me. That no. is definitely not me. I, and I, I prefer, you know, um, for example, we did the Voyage Youth graduation event, which I actually got my team to film for them as a contribution to them. Uh, for the kids, about 90 kids from all, all across London, you know, underprivileged mm -hmm. and uh, different, various different problems. And they've all achieved great status in working with Voyage Youth. So, you know, the, the fact that I can lay a little bit of influence or even help in a, yeah. in, a, in, a, in a small capacity for me is cool, you know. Wow. Um, so in, in, in that extent... Um, you know, you, they may not even realize that, you know, what I'm doing. That's not what I'm about, you know. Mm. Um, so it's a situation where uh, we're at that point. I, mean, I do, for example, I do a lot of stuff with SOS um, children around the world, and I've filmed yeah. four different documentaries for them, wow. um, which is not always known unless you go online and you see SOS Children Zambia with Lee John and, you know, you, yeah. see, you see what happens there. Or Tunisia, we did one in Tunisia after the first shooting. Um, and you see the tragedies, you see it on the ground floor. So yeah. you f I find I'm very blessed with mm. doing what I can do. And I think I get it from my mum because she's involved in the community. Right. And still is. She's 91 and she's 
this morning I spoke to her. She's gone down to the center. She's having a meeting. She's, she's you know, I think I probably get it from her and my sister because um, they were very, very proactive and stuff. So my music has all, always been the main priority. Yeah. But it's, it is work as well as being fun. Yeah. Being shows, it's fun, you know. Mm. And it is hard work, isn't it? And I think people don't realise the work behind the scenes. It is a business at the end of the day, isn't it? It looks all glamour and fun, but actually there's, there's two elements to it, isn't there? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I was always a working musician before Imagination, and I always stress my period in Imagination, the, the, the glory years of the 80s, mm. were a combustion of fun and, and energy, but a lot of work. We went to different territories and promoted but prior to that, I was building up, you know, working in pubs, bingo halls and clubs. I always talk about that because to me, I had a, a background prior to that where I was building, you know, my stamina and my knowledge. You know, we used to play in bingo halls that would, you know, hold about 2,000 people, yeah. you know, and do three games. And in between that, we'd, I'd play with the Sun Valley Serenaders, which was the band I used to play, which played reggae and soul and calypso and, you know. I did. I was a singing waiter in the West End, which is for nine months. It was a yeah. glorious time. I got my equity card. So all of these were learning curves, and you don't get a lot of those type of opportunities now. No. I sang in pubs and, and things like that, which was great. You know, um, the George Canning Pub in Brixton. So you know, I had highs and lows, ups and downs. Kept recording until finally I got my break with the track "All Got to Be Good," which was produced by um, Trevor Horn before Buggles. Yeah. I hit with video kill the radio star. Sure. And, that's what did it, you know. Um, this changing location. <laughs> oh, bless you. It sounds like I was saying I had today. a uh, <laughs> carpet being put in at the same time. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like a scene out of the Marx Brothers film where everybody's trying to get on <laughs> into the one room. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you just you you haven't got enough things on the go, have you, Lee? You just have to have to add another bit I in there. I know, <laughs> I know. Oh, if you do, oh, you know, I literally put, I I make lots and lots of lists. If you're around me, I have pads and pads <laughs> and pads, and on these pads has all the things that need to be done. And I I kind of say right within the two hour break, I'm going to do boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And then I'll say Archie on the PR, he'll do that. Edo tour management and those of other parts, you do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I start assigning. Oh. But you know what? It's not a hassle. I don't find it a hassle because I'm used to it. And um, I'm clear as to what we're doing. You know, I'm doing a yeah. seminar in um, Italy, which is like a master class in Italy in Rome in September, and uh, which is going to be quite fun. Mm. And it's going to be obviously about my life, but also about the music and what influenced me, et cetera, et cetera. And... Um, and then I'm doing a special event for Prince Albert in Monaco in, uh, just after that. Lovely. Um, and uh, another event for, uh, for um, uh, who is it, uh, in Paris. And then I'm doing something for Fashion Week in Paris as well. Crikey. So it's all within the same period of time. And uh, so it's, it's quite, uh, you know, and then I'm, I'm doing this show in Bolton someplace up there which is like uh, it's like different artists so you it's have uh, you know different different things and different experiences which I think you can only learn by and keeps you strong and keeps you aware there are ups and downs I was in Italy was it last week and uh, though it was great the organization was so bad it was just so bad oh, and you just think oh my god I thought you know we're going back in time yeah and there's nothing you can do. You just have to really roll with the punches. Um, you do, don't you? Mm, mm. So, you know, I've had a life outside the UK for many, 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 many years. So I don't rely just on the UK. Um, no. And, and uh, my jazz album was very successful in France and other areas and even in America. And, uh, you know, so it, it gave me quite a few different uh, arenas to go. In. And now with the film producing and directing, it's it's taking me to another area as well it's amazing isn't it i mean it sounds to me like you've, you've the, the journey started many years ago obviously when you when there was a circuit in in a sense wasn't there to learn mm. your craft and you've taken those skills and now you're applying them in ways that you possibly wouldn't have even dreamed of all those years ago oh totally i you know i i always wanted to be in film you know i always wanted to 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 act to dance to sing i wanted to be an all-rounder that yeah. was definitely part of what was part of my journey um, because I saw it happening in America, and I lived in America for a short while, 
and even when we went back to record or, or do things, you know, there was always that, uh, you know, the American dream. And I'm yeah. thinking, why can't we have the black British dream? Why mm. can't we dream to do all that too? Why must we always just be put into one, you know, thing? You know, that's it. You saying that's it. You know, why yeah. can't you be doing different uh, other areas and stuff like that? If you want to be a poet, be a poet, you know. Yeah, sure. And it's what you apply yourself to do. Um, and with modern technology, that's the good side of it because I find I can do things that I didn't think I could do. Yeah. Um, and then I saw other people doing things before and I thought, oh, you've moved into that area as well. Okay, well, you know what? I can do that myself, you know. And, um, you know, like, for example, for SOS, if you go on my, pa- my web page, you'll see I did a book. I did, yeah, a, I did yeah. a photographic book. Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of people don't know. So I know. I was looking that. at the books here. You've also done one, haven't you, regarding your trip over to uh, to Africa there as well, wasn't it? South Africa. That's right. From that's within right. the heart. And it was amazing. Because mm. I saw graffiti um, of, on paintings that were all over the, the village of Langa and Thornton. And it just kind of aligned with what was happening with the SOS children. Um, and so I just, I just took all these little graffiti pictures, put them together with the pictures of the kids. And um, so for me, that was um, quite a high point, quite yeah, a high point. Yeah, amazing. I mean, have these things just come to you in a sort of a sporadic kind of way, Lee, and you've taken the journey and the opportunities that arise? Or have you almost stood back and say, actually, I've got this ambition to be a film director. I'm, how do I get there and, and start to go down a particular road? Which end of the spectrum is it? Well, it starts where you get thrown into it. Like, for example... I've done many, many videos, and I got to a point where you, I get to a point where I'm tired of being in front of the video, to be quite honest mm. with you. Um, we were doing the jazz album with a very good friend of mine who's a director, editor, producer, Stefan Pirolo, said, look, you know, you're going to be in the jazz album, you're going to Rochefort in France, why don't you um, film the whole journey? And this was like 2003. And he said, this is the direction that's going to be happening within the industry soon and he was very right and he showed me a few people who were doing that mm. and um and i thought you know you're right and so that's what i did i started to film the journey from london to paris paris to la rochelle la rochelle to rochefort and then we were in this little town which is famous for the film la dame mademoiselle de rochefort which had Catherine mm-hmm. Deneuve, yeah. yeah one of the last uh, um, films of Gene Kelly and also um, George Chakar from West Side Story. It's fabulous. Um, and uh, it was the town was the musical uh, because they'd filmed in that whole small town and you still have speakers where they play jazz on a Thursday and a Friday and it's a funny atmosphere and, and everything closes down around nine, eight, nine o'clock. It's like a ghost town. Wow. Uh, there are things, not, there are obviously little bars and stuff but it's not like towns you'd, you'd see and it's very funny um but they had a studio there which was in the old cinema and uh, which has such character to it and uh we filmed all of this and it was a wonderful journey wonderful experience and you can actually see it if you go to film mm-hmm. you can see the, the making of the film my soul album wow. and that made me get more into filming and directing and editing because together with Stefan we sat for hours going through all this footage there was no one else to do it you know yeah. I could have I could have easily got someone else in but we said look we can do it. and he had trust in me and in my eye and we sat there and then some friends of ours came over and we'd edited like five or six hours and we had a, an event and everybody came over to friends house and everybody drank wine and they were saying this isn't good i like this i don't like this i don't drink any wine and it was great and then i was making notes he was getting defensive because he said oh but no this is good <laughs> and i was taking notes like a secretary and then we went back in and did it and that you know, drew my hunger into more of that. Yeah. It's just like recording an album. And then after that, you know, I went to SOS Children in um, in Thornton and Nanga, and I brought over a team and uh, went straight into it. And after that, anything I, did, I do now, I film. Like I did a promotional thing for um, Paris Fashion Week. Right. And uh, we filmed that. Uh, you know the new and I uh, did some new pictures and stuff. So wonderful. It's in you. You are in control of your own destiny. Yes. Yeah. And it's whether or not you take those opportunities. I guess, isn't it? You know that that came to you in terms of like the opportunity to edit, direct, etc. And it's mm. whether you've got the confidence mm. to grab it, isn't it? And say, Do you know what, I'm going to have a go. 
You will, you know, someone said to me, you have an eye, you have a look, you have a sound, you have an ear. Mm. Use it. And mm. that's the situation. And understanding the stage, understanding the presence, understanding the visual. And there's a lot of people passing on that are not around anymore. That used to be teachers. So we have to carry that flame. Because yeah. there's so much history that's just being forgotten about. Henceforth, that's why I started to do flashback. Mm-hmm. I just felt British black history is floundering. People and the kids don't know about it. They mm. don't know they don't know who to look up to. They're looking up to Jay Z and Beyonce. And they don't realise that there are people over here who've, who've contributed so many hit records around the world and people are dancing to, you know, besides imagination and, and I thought it was important that people get to know who they're all about. Even if it's a two seconds, you hear that regularly. Oh, yeah, I remember that. That's what Flashback is about, for you to honor these people who have all done really great, you know. Oh, that's amazing. And I think that's that whole essence of taking something that is the, 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 the great, shall we say, and taking mm. that to a new generation and, and educating them in really the history is a yeah. really special thing. Because, you know, unfortunately... Um, the media only grab onto who's there for now. They're talking about yeah. um, uh, whoever it's Scorpio, what his name, Scorcher. I can't even think right now. But mm. you know, the, you know the 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 not drum and bass DJs, but that you know the the underground DJs. They, they're taking them and they're thinking that is just the one you know genre we're into. And I'm thinking there's soul, there's dad, there's funk, there's reggae, there's lovers rock, there's pop, there's dance, you dance. There's so many other areas, mm. and you know people just get overlooked time and time again, and you know, some people just get fed up with it and just don't bother. Just do that, you know, do what they need to do. And some people get come out of the business. And I just felt in flashback. I thought, no, I need to bring all of these people in because they need to be appreciated. We need to find out about their journeys, even if it's a minute and a half, two minutes, you know. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. and that's the the wonderful thing about doing flashback, the the film, which is going to be a series, right. ten part. We're looking at it as a brand, as a book. Um, we're looking at it as um, something for education. We've got an app which we have to then. It's a lot of work putting that together to make it into an, an educational um, platform. So you know, in in between everything else I'm doing, I'm also co- coordinating that. Wow. So uh, that's what keeps me very busy. No, I but because I know so much about what it's in, you know it's involved in it, um, it is a uh, it's 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 very demanding yeah absolutely and and of course taking all that history and then bringing it to life is is one thing you've then got to try and reach the audience to educate as well haven't you and that's a whole new ball game as well it's a Mm. never-ending journey isn't it it is and it does change you because obviously you know i have fun now like when i do the shows I just go for it and give it the best I can. Yeah. But because I've got all this knowledge of everything and everyone, it's all embedded in me. Yeah. You know, plus we're talking about all the American history that I do know as well. So it's a hell of a lot. Um, but I I'm, I'm glad I've got it. So now I'm teaching a lot of the young editors who are working with me the history. Most of the kids working with me, I think kids young young adults, they're like twenty three, twenty four. Yeah. And they're editing with me. We have I have a road of three or four of them that I'm using. And, you know, every day, you know, they don't know who this one is. They don't know who that one is. And uh, then I said, right, do some work to investigating on that, you know. Because mm-hmm. we're talking about the turn of the century when British black musicians came over in the classical form, then in the mid-30s and 40s, and then into the 50s where there was a mass uh, appeal of, of different people, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, then you go into the 60s and 70s, and the 80s was like an explosion beyond reach, you know. Yeah. And, you know, from DJs to to, to solo artists, to groups, you know, visually, musically, there's, there's a lot of diversity, I'd say, in, this, in the 80s, and that's what sustains even till today. Yeah. Um, and, and you have the early period of the 90s, which, which got stuff, and then after they went grungy and very... Um, reality show based and boy boy bands and girl bands which you either can take or leave Mm, I think a lot of people can just leave all that kind of stuff can't they (laughs) (laughs) I for one can (laughs) it's Uh, uh, you know but the whole industry has changed so much hasn't it It has moved on and I guess times do do move on but with Mm. four decades in the music business you know you've seen quite a lot of changes haven't you you know, yes, I have. I've seen many, many changes, and including our track, Changes! You know, <laughs> so many. And, you know, some good, some bad. Um, I just sometimes think that um, you can improve on things and, and move on into another life, but there's some things you should still sustain. 
I always say, you know, I don't live in the past, but I learn from the past and it's always going to be there. I take the positive things from the past, but I don't live there. Yeah. Um, but I look forward to today and tomorrow because I think today you can plant new seeds and grow new trees with the knowledge of what you've learned, you know, and I yeah. think that can make you stronger. That's what I do with modern technology. I've learned to adapt myself into the game of new, new technology, but using influences from the past. You know, I listen to a lot of older music. You know, I was listening mm -hmm. to Bob James or Chet Baker, or I was listening to, um, what was the other day? I, you know, such a wide range of things I may be listening to. Because um, I find in today's music, um, in, there's only a few people that I can say they're interesting, but more to the younger ear. Yeah. But I still like the old melodies and the grooves and the funks and real bass, real guitars, real keyboards. You know, like mm. even doing my new album, Retropia, that was one of the um, things that I wanted to have in it. So I got um, this great um, bass player um, who's worked with everybody. And my brain has gone his name now. Oh, my God. Um, but I'll come back to him. He's, he's done loads. And he worked with Incognito, who I have on the album, and uh, some stuff with Steve Nichol from Who Sends. And I'm happy I'm still busy, you know, after all this length of time. Well, absolutely. I mean, a lot of people don't have that longevity in their career, do they? You know, and it sounds to me you've been a bit of a chameleon to enable yourself to make sure that you're still here. Yeah, I mean, I worked with DJs. I did something recently with Victor Simonelli and those two a uh, producer from Miami, a bass player who wanted to get involved, and he's done that. So I said, cool, you know. So there's all these different wonderful um, projects that mu on a musical level that can still work. Yes. Um, and, you know, we've got Mel Gainer now from Simple Minds, a drummer. He he does his own thing. He's also playing, you know, with with, with imagination. So he's he's very, like me, he's got all that energy, and he's pushing. He said, let's do this, and let's do that. And I said, yeah, great, you know. So he's he's uh, been quite helpful, and I've, I've got a really good team around me as well. So that mm. helps too, because that's what you know. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do everything. Well, you, you couldn't. Know? No, absolutely not. You know, you've got books, you've got TV chat shows, you've got radio programs, mm. films, documentaries. Mm. You're directing, you're performing. You know, it's <laughs> it's a quite an eclectic mix as well. But is there one thing in your career that you look back on, you say, do you know what? That's what I've been most proud of. Oh wow. My goodness. I mean, I can only really speak right now about flashback because mm -hmm. that's the main thing. There's been loads. Um, my jazz album, I'd say, the jazz album, right. I thought, you know, it, it, it um, has become a classic by itself and people re keep rediscovering it over the years. And, um, and I'm glad I made it and I'm glad it was filmed. Yeah. So, you know, that made it much different because it's there. You know, people can actually watch it and see the mo the, 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 how I went through it. Um, because when you say jazz to some people, they're thinking, oh, my God, you know, I'm not into that kind of thing or mm -hmm. whatever. But it was a very eclectic jazz album. Yeah. So it had a soul feel, of, you know, the moments where I had a touch of an imagination feel. But I kind of gr grew from that. You know, I didn't want to be a replica of what I'd done pre of previously. Yeah. And um, and my musical director, who also plays us on the album, uh, has been playing with me since the late 80s, and he does a lot of jazz things and stuff, and so it was good. Um, and we've and everyone's been saying that we need to do another one. We need to, to so, you know, before, you know, the old um, gray cells go dead, I only <laughs> yeah. try to do that. But I'm looking forward to doing a new album because I, you know, just I do love um, recording. I do love uh, the the whole aspect of, of of creating. I think there was a moment in the '90s when everything was being sampled, and you'd spend hours and hours just to do a drum beat and stuff, and it got yeah. crazy, mm. and it lost it lost it for me. And I didn't I didn't I stopped enjoying it. You know, it became so technical that you know you you couldn't feel the organicness. Um, yeah. But now I can work with it uh, in the way I want to. And I tend to try and have um, different musicians coming in. So therefore, it, it, it gives it more of, a, more of an organic feel. Sure. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So with all this stuff going on then, Lee, what's next? I mean, you've mentioned there about fashion. That sounds a new, a new area that you're moving into. What's going on with that? Well, I've bought the trademark for Do It Right Now, and we've got T-shirts that were designed, which were more of a designer thing and some shirts and stuff. So we're moving in that direction. Um, but it's part charity, part 
you know, up for the public. So I'm doing it slowly, slowly. There's um, a particular company that seems to be interested. We're waiting to hear. Um, they, they, they want me to kind of be the face of what they're doing right. and then probably have an outlet. So I'm waiting um, for them to, to be in touch. Incredible. Because everybody's on holiday. Yeah, so that's another area which also will involve the, flash, the flashback brand. So everything's kind of interconnected. Yes, absolutely. And, and actually, you're at the centre of this and you're an iconic person, you know, in your own right in terms of your image and your, your history and everything that goes with it. So I can see why that's important to, to actually express yourself in a way in all these different ways, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, last year I was doing some stuff with the British Collective, which was Junior Jessica, Noel McCoy, um, Donny, um, and uh, it was quite cool. It was quite cool. And um, um, Omar gets involved with part of it as well. And but I, you know, with everything I was doing, it was really hard. And my schedules are different. And I'm playing, you know, arenas and 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 uh, big festivals, which is different to what they playing. So it was it was like we were in two different worlds. Yeah. And and I and uh, but I liked being a part of it because it was quite fun to do. And yet again, a different music set, um, you know, because they came from more, more uh, I've, I'd crossed over to commercial for a while, they've been more underground and more leaning towards the reggae side of things with a bit of with the jazz coming in, um, except for Junior, who's had, you know, pop success, as Mum used to say. So it was interesting doing that. And I like projects like that, but it depends on how much um, I can give to it, you know? Yeah. Yes, and there's and there's only so much you can give, isn't there? At the end of the day, you mm, know, there's only mm. tw- you know, there's only so many hours in the day <laughs> that you can totally use. believe. Me. <laughs> and you've also got to leave a little bit for yourself and to try and come yes, down from all this. Yeah, trying to breathe. Trying to breathe. Yeah. Well, I think you know uh, it's amazing what you've got going on. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that is actually really? I exciting? think we've touched base. I yeah. think we've definitely to touch base. There's more to come. Wow. But let's let's. Um, let let I said let the universe open that up so then sure. we can have enough yeah. energy to do it. <laughs> yes, no worries at all. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you, and have a Thank lovely, you. lovely time away, won't you? And try and relax because it sounds like you I need will, it. That's the main thing. I've got one more thing to do tomorrow, and then after tomorrow, that is it. Oh, good. Put those feet <laughs> up. Have that pina colada or that glass of wine or whatever, exactly. and just chill. <laughs> all right, Julie, you take all care. The best. Speak soon. Bye bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Cattails. To listen again to this and other tales, go to cattails.co.uk.